In the not-so-distant future, you'll likely be writing far fewer lines of code than you are today, because artificial intelligence is coming to a VS Code near you. Microsoft, aka GitHub, just announced Copilot yesterday, a tool powered by GPT-3 capable of writing code automatically. All you have to do is write a descriptive function name or some comments, and it will automatically fill in the implementation details for you. And it's not just inserting a snippet, this is actual novel code that has never been seen before. It looks at the code you've already written in your project as context, and attempts to generate new code to match it perfectly. For example, imagine you've written a React component and you now want to write a unit test for it. Just write a comment describing what you want to test, and Copilot will generate the code based on your component and the testing framework that you're using. Or say you want to calculate the number of days between two dates. For me, that's an instant Google search, then Stack Overflow copy and paste. With Copilot, all I have to do is write a function name, and it implements the function body for me automatically. If I'm not perfectly happy with the implementation, I can click a button to get the next prediction. Anything that might have brought you to Stack Overflow can be auto-completed in your IDE and custom-tailored to fit your code base. Developers like to joke about how often they Google things and copy answers from Stack Overflow, so you can only imagine how big of a time saver this is going to be. I just got access to Copilot myself, so let's dive in and see how useful it really is. I just installed the extension in VS Code, which required me to authenticate with my GitHub account. I've got a front-end vanilla JavaScript project here with files for my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You'll notice a little Copilot icon down here at the bottom. That just allows you to toggle it on or off. The first thing I want to try is to define a function called intersection of arrays and see if it can complete the body of that function successfully. We'll give the function a name of intersection of, oh, and it just predicts the name of the function that we're going to write. And it looks like it's being implemented correctly, but there are multiple ways we could implement this function. Let's go ahead and delete the code back to the function name. If we hover over the automatically generated code, we can click next to cycle through different suggestions. I actually don't see any I like here, so I'm going to to click the Open Copilot option. That will synthesize 10 different possible solutions, and it happens very fast, like within one or two seconds. But looking closer at the solutions, it looks like they are all pretty much the same, even though I know there are multiple different approaches to implementing an intersection of arrays. The top answer on Stack Overflow actually has a cleaner implementation, and I would have expected this to at least be an option in the results. But let's move on and see if we can build a little counter app that has multiple moving parts. First, I'm going to define some state, which is just a very variable equal to zero. You'll notice that it's trying to make predictions as I'm writing out this variable. That is one thing that's kind of annoying. It's almost a little too aggressive when making predictions. It would be nice if the AI could predict when I actually want predictions. Also, it predicts things for React and Vue, even though I'm not in a React or Vue project. In any case, the next thing I want to do here is grab a button from the DOM. I'll give the AI a hint by writing a comment, and you'll notice that it actually auto-completes the comment for me. It knows exactly what I want to do because it's such a common thing to do. Now that we have a button, let's set up an event listener on the click event to increment the state each time that it's clicked. Now I start writing another comment, I don't even type anything, and it fills out that entire comment for me. That's pretty crazy because it's using the context of our previous line of code to figure out what to write next. I'll hit tab a couple times, and you'll notice that it sets up an event listener on the button variable that we defined. Then it proceeds to update the state by incrementing it by one. It also adds a modulus three here. I'm not sure what that's about. That'll just make it count to three in a loop, and I have no idea where it would get the idea to do that. And finally, it knows that we we want to show this state in the UI, so it takes our button and sets the inner HTML to the current state. That's pretty wild, but now I'm going to go into the HTML and add the button to the DOM. It doesn't seem to know that my JavaScript is looking for a certain button, but if I add a button comment, it will autocomplete with the expected ID. And finally, let's jump into our CSS and give it some style. If I add a comment for a red button with a blue background, it will start implementing that code line by line. But it's generally more efficient to just go straight to the copilot and see the available options here. An interesting side note is that you'll get different results here each time you go to the copilot, even if the comment is exactly the same. The results are kind of all over the place, but I think it's enough to give you some starting code to work with. Don't expect this thing to be turning out production grade code just yet. That's not going to happen until protocol 4 is implemented. Now if we go ahead and open our app in the browser, we should get this blue button, and every time it's clicked, it will increment the state by the modulus of 3. All things considered, I think Copilot did a pretty good job. It feels a little rough around the edges, but it's by far the best AI coding experience that I've ever had. 
But how does this thing actually work? Well, in order to build useful AI, you need a ton of data. Luckily, over the last 12 years, developers have graciously donated their time and code to help other developers on the internet while foregoing their copyright to that content, primarily on the website Stack Overflow, which was just acquired this month for $1.8 billion. Impeccable timing for their founders to cash out, just weeks before a game-changing existential threat hits the industry. It also takes code from public, open-source GitHub repos. Now, because it's generating unique code, I don't think it has to worry about any open source licensing requirements. Because this data is public, Microsoft can freely use it to build their AI. The deep learning model behind the data is GPT-3, or Generative Pre-trained Transformer 3, which is easily one of the most impressive AI products ever developed. People describe it as amazing, humbling, and terrifying. And it's really good at being creative based on some initial context. Like it can take a complex article and summarize it for a second grader. Or it can take an idea that you have for an app and generate the actual ad copy. Under the hood, it's just a massive neural network that's been trained on over 175 billion parameters. To put that in perspective, there are many popular pre-trained neural networks out there, and none of them have anywhere close to 1 billion parameters, let alone 175 billion. It's developed by a company called OpenAI that was founded by people like Elon Musk, Sam Altman, and other high-profile tech figures. It started in 2015 as a nonprofit, but I think they realized they could make a shitload of money and converted to a for-profit company in 2019. Now, Microsoft doesn't control OpenAI, but they did make a $1 billion investment in 2019. Then in September 2020, they announced they had licensed the exclusive use of GPT-3. Other companies can still use the API, but Microsoft is the only company that can truly take full advantage of the GPT-3 algorithm. That means Microsoft will be able to build products that nobody can really compete with, unless of course you can build an algorithm that's better than GPT-3. Don't let the name fool you. OpenAI is not open. A better name for it might be something like like Windows AI. But this is all great news for developers, right? Ever since Microsoft acquired GitHub, the developer experience has been getting better and better. You can get your GitHub repos directly in VS Code, GitHub Actions make continuous integration super easy, and Copilot will just be one more awesome feature to add to the list. But it makes me wonder, why does Microsoft love us developers so much? Historically, Microsoft has not had a great relationship with developers. Just Google, embrace, extend, extinguish. Modern Microsoft has been doing a lot of embracing and extending, but who knows if they have any plans for the extinguish step. Now, I'm just joking around here, but let's imagine that the goal was to replace developers with AI. Programmers are expensive, in short supply, and one of the biggest expenses for any tech company. To replace them, you need a four-step plan. Step one is to get them to share a bunch of public information about their code. In step two, we use that code to create a product that makes developers happier and more productive. The initial version won't be perfect, but as more and more developers use it, we'll collect more and more data and reinforce the existing algorithm. Algorithm. In theory, the algorithm will get so good that we'll no longer need programmers who write code, maybe just technicians who can help guide the algorithm to the right place, at which point your company can fire its programmers and pay a bunch of artificial Azure coders by the second. Copilot is free for now and only available through a technical preview, but they do plan to develop it into a commercial product in the future. AWS already has CodeGuru for ML-powered code recommendations, so the big players here are already introducing paid services that will replace the jobs normally done by human coders. We're currently on step three of the plan, but again, I'm just joking around here. This is just a meme channel, I love Bill Gates and Microsoft, and if you think they're motivated by anything beyond their genuine love for developers, then you must be the kind of person who thinks 2 plus 2 equals 4. All I ask is that you hit like and subscribe to my channel so I can keep you updated on the latest tools hitting our industry. Thanks for watching, and I I will see you in the next one.